Hi, Sam. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, thank you for coming and speaking with New Beauty and sharing your journey with us. There's so many readers and followers who are interested in getting a mommy makeover. So I know this information is going to be really helpful for a lot of people. So thank you. I'm happy to be here. What made you decide to get a mommy makeover? What were some of your concerns? But what really made you say, I'm going to do it now? I've always wanted a mommy makeover, especially after I had my last son 20 years ago. And I just kept waiting and waiting. And then I told my husband, I'm not waiting anymore. And this is, I'm, I told him last year when I was 43, I'm not waiting anymore. So I scheduled it for, I think, my birthday this year. That's a great birthday gift. It yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm so happy. Wonderful. And what made you choose? Uh, you're at Dr. Chet May's Plastic Surgery Center. Mm -hmm. What made you choose Dr. May's? And what made you decide on on getting a mommy makeover? Did you always know you were going to do both your breasts and your, your abdomen? I always knew I was going to definitely do my abdomen. And I had always wanted larger breasts because I was always very small. So um, I just decided to do both of them. My husband, actually, he encouraged me. I should do it all. So I was yeah. like, okay, let's do were, it. Were you nervous about, um, you know, being under or having two procedures at the same time? Was that something you were worried about? No, I really wasn't worried. Um, Dr. Mays, he's board certified and he does wonderful work. I've actually followed his career for a very long time. And um, I've heard a lot of good you know, feedback from a lot of people who are also in the medical field too. Um, I'm a nurse and I have friends who are surgical techs. And, you know, I asked him, hey, if you were going to have this done, who would you choose? And his name came up a lot. Yeah. His before and afters are incredible. And um, your before and afters are incredible too. So such an amazing result. Um, are you glad you finally did it? Yes, I have. The only regret I have is not doing it sooner. And then what made you, so you had implants, right? I did not, I didn't have them before, but I have them now. Yes. You have them now. So what made mm -hmm. you decide as opposed to a breast lift or some other type of augmentation, what made you decide that you were going to do the implant? Well, I really didn't need a lift. Um, I didn't have a lot of tissue. I don't think, I mean, I had enough, but not enough to sag. And I really, I didn't breastfeed. So I didn't have a lot of volume loss. I just wanted more. Yeah. And then for your augmentation, did you do body contouring as well? Yes. Dr. Mays did do some lipo on my stomach. And he also did, I did request that he do, I call them the pities. They're like the armpit. Yes. Boob. The, the you know, little just to extra. Make them look... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I call I it think... the Well, I think that's kind of like a finishing touch, right? You don't want to yeah. have like your newer, you know, brand new breast and then have like a little side boob action happening. Right. So that, that was a good choice. Very good choice. And what about recovery? Were you worried about how long it was going to take to recover? And can you tell me a little bit about what that was like? I knew recovery was going to be six weeks, so I made sure to save all my PTO time so that I could take off. Um, my husband, he took the first week off because that was definitely the hardest and did Dr. Mays, you know, he prescribes pain medicine and muscle relaxers to help with the muscle tightness and the pain. And after a week, um, I felt pretty good. After a week, I went to Tylenol and ibuprofen. Wow. So the first few days, were you in a recliner, like everybody says? Were you yes. sitting up? <laughs> I was. I was yeah. in a recliner, and my husband, he slept in right next to me. And he was just wonderful and so supportive. Are but you... I was in a recliner. You were in that recliner. And that sounds like, so a week... A week was like the solid block of time where you were sort of like getting your bearings back and healing and all of that stuff. So yes. 
Well, did you need the full six weeks or was that just, you know, how long you would take to feel sort of normal again? I did take the full six weeks because I knew I was going to have some muscle repair too. Yeah. And that um, is something in itself because your muscles are back together. They're healing your incision and you're tight too. Your whole stomach is tight after and you're kind of hunched over for a while. So with the muscle repair, do you feel stronger in your core now? And did that help sort of give you like a flatter result? Yes, absolutely. I do. I haven't seen these abs in the <laughs> longest time. And I used to say they probably went to my back, but they're definitely back together now. Well, I think that's one of the things that made me happiest. Um, just r writing about mommy makeovers and uh, tummy tucks is just learning that our, our muscles separate. It's not our mm -hmm. fault. And kids do this to us. So, and really you absolutely. can't put them back together. There's no exercise that you could do in the gym that's no, going to absolutely put them back not. together. I mean, I've worked out, I've lost weight, I've done a lot of things and I've always felt so weak in my core and now I feel stronger than I've ever felt. So that's really like a three-part uh, result for me, your breasts, your abdomen, mm -hmm. and that that strength that you get back in your core. So do you feel different walking around? I do. I do. I feel a lot more confident. My posture is better. My back, I don't have as much back pain as I used to have because my core is a lot stronger now. So, you know, it's not pulling on my back as much. So right. it's, it's, it's been life changing for me. Amazing. And what about clothes? That's my favorite thing. Like, are are you just going crazy shopping, buying new things? I did. Yeah, I got to stay out of the stores. But <laughs> yeah, because I don't have my stomach. I don't have, um, it's not as big. So I can actually wear clothes that I never would wear before. And when, how many months out are you from your surgery? I'm about eight months out now. So did you get to enjoy the summer? Were you out by the pool with your new curve? I did. I wore a bikini bikini with like the Ooh. low low waist. And then I also wore a bikini top, a string bikini top, which I've never worn ever before in my life. My husband and I, we went to Italy and it was just so fun just being there and not being self-conscious about yeah. how I looked. That's amazing. It really does make such a huge difference in your life. So you wish you would have done it sooner, right? Yes. Amazing. <laughs> and do you have any um, words of advice or tips for people who are really thinking about it? Absolutely. Definitely make sure that you have help the first week. Don't be afraid to ask people to help you and um, just to follow your doctor's orders and you will be fine. Yeah, and just do it, right? <laughs> just do it. Be patient with yourself and have realistic expectations of what it's going to be after, before and after. Yeah, that's so true. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and speaking with us. It's such a great topic and um, your results are out of this world. Hi, Dr. Mays. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great. Great. And thank you so much for joining us. We love, love, love Sam's amazing results. Can you walk me through um, her mommy makeover and the procedures that went into it? Yeah. So I see a lot of patients like Sam here in my office at Mays Plastic Surgery. And it's one of those things where I'm sort of sitting down talking to the patients when they come in because they have goals. And when they see themselves uh, looking in the mirror, they see something in the mirror that's different than how they actually visualize themselves. So it's my job as a plastic surgeon to sort of sit there and listen to their areas of concerns. And specifically with Sam, after having children, she lost that volume in her breast. That was one thing that she talked about, just the fullness that she once had, uh, that she had lost from the weight loss and having the kids over the years. And the quickest way, easiest way to get that as a plastic surgeon is with an implant. So breast augmentation which is one of the features that we use to augment her breast. And we actually use two different sizes in her breast. I can go details about that later. Uh, but also the abdominal area was an area of concern. She had some hanging skin, laxity to that muscle, the diastasis that we talk about a lot as plastic surgeons. And one way to get that back is not only removing the skin, but tightening that muscle in like a corset uh, when you fix those rectus diastasis during surgery. 
And then Sam mentioned liposuction. How important is liposuction technique when you're doing body contouring? Yeah, so liposuction, I mean, that's one of the most popular procedures in the world. And as a plastic surgeon, if I'm not doing facial work, I'm doing body work, I'm always doing liposuction because I mentioned the skin laxity, but there's also the body's natural curve. Sometimes you have to remove that camouflage, and that camouflage is actually fullness. So liposuction uh, that I use basically is called Owl's Power Assisted Liposuction. It's a technique that has a little vibrating, reciprocating device that actually cuts down on fatigue as a plastic surgeon. So my OR days go from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. I might have three or four liposuction cases during that day. So something that cuts down on fatigue is me as a plastic surgeon also adds to the result for the patient. I'm always going to use that uh, to get those really what we call snatched waistlines. And Sam's waistline is yeah. great. Uh, Super she's snatched. a nice dress on today. She's showing it. Hopefully the camera picked that up. I love <laughs> when I see confidence in my patients. And I'm very thankful for patients like her and come in and actually talk about their experience here. And that's what we pride ourselves on at Mays Plastic Surgery. And you mentioned using two different implants. Um, wh what goes into that decision? Are you doing that while you're performing the surgery? Uh, no, actually, everything is well choreographed. So at a con mm -hmm. yeah, consultation, uh, and sometimes patients don't even notice that. You know, I'll be talking to them, and if I see a little asymmetry, uh, I'll mention it to them. I was like, do you think your breasts are similar? And a lot of patients will say yes. And then I'm like, well, let me show you something. So we'll get the <laughs> mirror. And actually, men and women, if you split us down the middle, there's a lot of asymmetries between the two sides. And the way I size patients for implants, which Sam might remember that, is we put a sports bra on you in the consultation room. We actually put implants of different sizes in because I want to know what a patient's comfortable with. Uh, sort of the older way of doing implants back in the day was surgeons would come in to the OR with 10 implants stacked up in the corner. I remember as a resident, seeing some of the attendings, they'd have boxes and boxes of implants. They'd fill saline into the breast and they'd wait till they thought the patient looked good on the table. And that's not how I do my, what I call designer breast surgery. It's something that the patient and I are deciding before we get to the operating room. Those two different sizes, we talked about possibilities. Remember I said maybe a 325, a 355, or a 385. We tried on quite a bit. Yeah. And then I even came back after the consult and tried on some more because I just <laughs> wanted to be sure. Yeah, because it's her breast, and I want her to be happy with the outcome. And, you know, we don't have a lot of dissatisfaction with sizes of our breasts afterwards because of the way we plan for our surgeries. And in the operating room, I did use something called a sizer. It's a temporary implant I actually put in. So we get one side set with the size that I know the patient likes, and that other side is a little different. I'll put a sizer in temporarily and actually sit the patient up in the operating room in our facility while they're asleep, look and see if that sizer matches the contralateral or the other side. And for her, she needed a, what was it, 355 that we did on the other side to match that 325. Mm -hmm. And my question to the patients is when you wear tops or bras, do you notice a difference in your breasts or they feel similar? They feel similar now. Yeah. So that's the goal. The goal is, you know, if I didn't tell them I used two different sizes, they probably right. wouldn't know it. It's all documented, obviously. Uh, but it's one of those things I don't want any bra discrepancy. Bra discrepancy right. is where if you wear a bra where one side pushes out more. So if you don't take that into account as a plastic surgeon, they're going to have trouble finding tops that fit them appropriately. Very true. So for viewers who are considering a mommy makeover and they just haven't made a final decision yet, what is your best advice? Yeah, so depending on where you are in the country, you know, online is where people start. Uh, Google's a good way to find surrounding surgeons around you where you're at. Uh, but we do a lot of destination here. We're in Louisville, Kentucky. People come in from all over the country because they found us, uh, maybe not on Google, but maybe on some of the other social media platforms from TikTok to Instagram. I always talk about diversifying the portfolio, not just with your finances, but with your online presence. So if you're on TikTok, I'm on TikTok now because that's where a lot of people go to find information from building a birdhouse to who the plastic surgeons are. So make sure we have educational stuff, you know, some funny stuff, just a variety okay. to really show who we are. But it really starts with credentials. So yeah. someone might say they're a plastic surgeon, but you have to dive deep into their credentials. Make sure they're board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, because that is a plastic surgeon who's board certified. Not that's so important. Non Correct. And I know New Beauty and everyone there is very critical about that. And that's why I've been a contributor. But new beauty and I support you guys because you look for those credentials just like I want my patients.
patients to look for yeah. those credentials. There's a lot of, um, you know, misunderstanding out in the industry about a cosmetic surgeon. So it's, I'm glad that you said that. It's really important to vet your doctor and not just look at pictures or, you know, um, you know, online threads about Correct. who's the best doctor in your town. Right. Make sure and, you do your due diligence. Right. Yeah. And that's why we're on all those platforms, because I want to make sure I have some of the entertaining stuff that people are looking for. Right. You want to yeah. have those funny reels and engagement like with good it. information too yeah yeah well, thank you i have a big team around me these are not my ideas so if you see me uh i have a big team that brings me ideas and content that we try to stay relevant we follow a lot of new beauty trends you guys are on point uh with what everyone's looking for in the cosmetic industry so thank you for that it's very helpful. well thank you dr mays and this was an incredible before and after so thank you for letting us get a peek behind the before and after as we like to say and I want to thank you and Sam for your time. And hopefully this inspires somebody who is thinking about having the surgery. Oh, thank for you so sure. much. Thank you.